Today we're talking getting ready for a wedding. I'm ready. Are you? There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. <laughs> you know how to carry your stuff. Isn't that the truth when it comes to wedding photography? There's two types of photographers when you're getting started doing weddings, right? There's well, number one. The person that brings you. way too much way stuff. Too much stuff. Number two, the newbie, right? That maybe doesn't bring enough. Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, just their camera, right? They're in just as much trouble. But I've seen the newbies do, the, do what you do too. Yeah. Like you just bring way too much stuff. Exactly. So today we're going to talk about really prepping for a wedding. So this show today, we're gonna to be talking about prepping for the wedding. Next week, just to give you a little teaser, we're actually gonna be showing a wedding. Yeah, we're we'll be shoot, shooting, shooting a, a real wedding, wedding this weekend uh, this in weekend, Napa Valley. And we're gonna film it and give some tips and tricks and that will be part of next week's show. So make sure you catch that. But this okay. week we're talking everything on how to prepare for that, that day. Exactly, but you know, there's plenty of places out there that you can find what kind of camera lenses should you use during a wedding. We don't wanna talk about that. No, no. We wanna talk about the things that you should bring to a wedding that everybody forgets about. The stuff that after years of years of doing weddings, you go, these are important things not to forget. Yeah, and you know, some of the stuff that we're gonna show you today is stuff that I would have been dead in the water if I didn't bring it. And yeah. it has nothing to do with camera gear. Yeah. So and it's not every wedding, but it is that one wedding you need it. Yeah. So yeah. So let's uh, let's head on downstairs we'll, where we've got stuff laid out that we're prepping to, to pack up. And uh, let's take a look at what we're gonna we're gonna pack. All right, let's go to it. So let's head on in. Let's uh, see what we got here in our bag of tricks. So. Exactly. So it looks like a whole bunch of junk. We're a mess here, actually. So why don't you? You're over there. Why don't you start? Yeah. I see, so. Like I don't usually take craisins. To no, I mean people so. are like you're gonna be watching this saying, "What in the world is this guy all about? He's got the giant bag of craisins." But I gotta tell you, these things are like the magic pills for a photographer because they're super packed with energy. I'm gonna sound like I'm a nutritionist here. They're super packed with great energy. <laughs> and they're super gross. <laughs> you, you don't like raisins? I don't like raisins. Oh, raisins are awesome. So what they do though is they just help me recharge because when you are shooting a wedding, you will not have time to eat. And you could be doing this for 13, 14 hours during the day. And man, just having snacks. That's my, that's my big tip here is bring snacks because a lot of times- I always carry Cliff Bars in my camera bag. Yep. So. So, that, so I'd say, Snacks, things like raisins, but here's the key. Have some jugs of water with you for you because being dehydrated is a mess. You don't want to be dehydrated. But then what I also do is I always bring a flat of water with me and I give out water to the bride and groom like crazy before the ceremony because man, without that, they get dehydrated. That ruins their whole day. Yeah. That's a big one. What do you got over there? That. Uh... All right, well, here's something that nobody remembers when you're first starting out, hangers. I always carry hangers with me. I have some really nice wood hangers, cloth hangers. You got a, a nice non-slip hanger. Gives just a nice variety. Yep. Here's why. Because you're gonna go in and you're gonna go to take your beautiful dress shots. And you're gonna go to the maid of honor and go, hey, can you get me the dress? I've got a great spot to do this. She's gonna bring it to you and it's gonna be in a plastic wrapper from the uh, dry cleaner and it's gonna be on a wire hanger with paper. Yeah, She's gonna go, hanger. here you go. There you go. I, I love this hanger though because this one's got all these little hooks, right? So you can hang the dress yeah. no matter what type of dress it is. It's beautiful. It hangs so, nicely. So yep. yeah, and it turns. You got to get one that swivels because. But bringing three different types is great because you, you know, know it, it may be that you're somewhere where you got more of a traditional look to it. I've shot in a lot of like farmhouses yep. where something modern looks out of place. Look but anyways, hangers. You must bring a hanger. Don't rely on the bride to have a good hanger. Yep. Yep. So What's in your pile of this? Garbage? This pile of stuff here. This is pretty crazy. So this is actually what my assistant brings. My assistant, a lot of times, is my wife. So she has this little bag, and she's got all this stuff minus my chopsticks. She's got all the stuff that she brings with her. Now this this is stuff that you're always going to forget about. But things like a lint brush, right? Because yeah. that groom is wearing a black suit a lot of times, and he has some lint on him just so you can wipe that off. Things like Vaseline, right? Just hand creams. Sanitizer. Sanitizer. Stuff that smells nice because they can start to get stinky. Lip gloss, lip balms, pens, 
a pair yeah. of scissors. Scissors are great because the last thing you want to do to a bride or a groom go, let me get that yep. and pull the thread. Now the thing so. I don't see in here that she always has with her is a sewing kit. Okay. And that's something that's critical. I've actually had to, as a photographer, hem pants. <laughs> so um, that's one of the things that you yeah. have to do is, you know, maybe a button pops off, you gotta re-sew it real quick. Yep. Kleenex, Q-tips, big one. A lot of our weddings here in Northern California are outdoor weddings. Yes, and it's summertime. Bug spray. Yeah. It's critical. Nail polish remover, dental floss, a toothbrush, fingernail clipper. This one, this is the one that I see. That is a big deal. Huge. You can I can't pick it up because it it's round. How about that? It's so, the tide the pan. Tide pan, right? never fails yeah the groom will be doing his pre-groom thing you know they're all drinking <laughs> in their <laughs> guys in the being guys they and... spill salsa on their shirt yep. right little tide pen does wonders it actually takes it right out so the, that's a big but this little collection of stuff just go and go to the dollar section you know the little sample section at, at walmart right and just start collecting stuff put it in a bag yep. carry it with you in your trunk so you always have it that's big. What else you got? Anything, okay. uh... So if you saw me getting out of my car at a wedding, you're going to see me with my giant camera bag. You're going to see me with my messenger bag. Like you looked this morning. <laughs> like I looked this morning. I, I carry a lot of gear, but when it's time to shoot the wedding, I'm not carrying my bag. You cannot sit and carry a big bag around and set it down and go, let me shoot some pictures here and then move it over, especially when the wedding's going on. What I have found for all of my extra stuff great bag. is this low pro messenger bag this is one of the greatest wedding aids that i've call ever it a seen passport. they call it a passport and uh it's just a nice soft bag there's there's nothing in there that to uh to bother you i can carry it on my side i can sling it around back of me it's a super comfortable so bag. it's, it's super comfortable it weighs body. nothing and I don't mind, I can take it off, I can drop it on the ground, but generally in this bag, I'll have a bottle of water, I'll have my batteries, I'll have maybe one extra lens. Yeah. I, I shoot with the uh, spider holster, spider. so my camera right there sits on the spider holster, but I have this for all of those extra things that mm -hmm. I think I might need. Yeah. So I this passport bag, I highly recommend looking into a bag like this. You know, maybe for you it's just a fanny pack, but you need some kind of small bag that stays with you. I love this bag. But, and I'm gonna laugh at you if I ever see you with a fanny pack, but you can wear a fanny I, pack. I, so. fanny packs. I, I can rock a fanny pack I good. don't think you can. So one of the things that I, I actually bring to all my shoots, not just weddings, but all my shoots, is these little clips that I got at Home Depot, right? I mean, you can get a bag of them for like four bucks. Yeah. But these things are great because there's a lot of times you just maybe have to clip up a dress, do something, clip a, just clip whatever, clip curtains back, these things, Get, do yourself a favor and get the metal ones too. Yep. Don't get the plastic ones. No, the plastic ones. They just snap. Don't work well. And they don't. And they snap at the most inopportune times. But uh, yeah, these things are worth their weight. Fantastic. In gold. Okay. Uh, what else we got on the table here? All right. Well, we're not really talking about gear, but this is something. That's this is just stuff that about. that we just think a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. So a lot of times in a wedding, there's times where you're having to shoot with a little bit of flash. It's not every wedding, uh, but sometimes I will get into a very dark church that I just can't use anything um, big flash wise. It's gotta be portable. So like when the bride's coming up the aisle, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my flash on camera mm -hmm. and I'm gonna use this little guy right here. This is called a DEMB, D-E-M-B, -E flip it. So this is the large flip it. I love this thing, it sits on my camera. I actually mount it sideways on there so it sits right here on the top of my camera. I can shoot horizontal, I can flip my camera vertical and yeah. still get a vertical shot and I've, Increase the it's, size it's nice of the light it, source. It's yeah, very it soft. a little catch light in the eyes. Exactly. For those shots. And it is just coming down the aisle. It's those close ups where it's really quick and it's out of the way. I can just flip it down out of the way um, so it's not blocking me. So, you know, I look like I'm going, hey, look yep. at me. Whenever I'm not shooting, I'm throwing that thing yep. down because I want to be as small as possible. So yep. The okay. Demba Flip It, I love this product and use it all the time. So, hey, let me talk about these. This, yes. this seems like a funny thing to have on my table here, but. These are my pants. Now, I'm not going to put them on right now since I already have my pants. But these are, are made by a company called 511. They make pants for um, for law enforcement, for yeah. tactical use, for first responders, first firemen. Responders. And but I got to tell you, these pants yeah. are worth their weight in gold. They are the most comfortable pants you ever wear. They've got this, this flexi waistband, <laughs> which is really important. And why that's important, I don't care if you're slim as a you know stick right that's right these are gonna are gonna make a difference in the way that you actually function throughout your day because yep. you know what happens during wedding day you are bending down you're crouching down up down up yep. down up down and it just is so comfortable these things are also they are made with a teflon coating now that sounds weird for a yep. pair of pants 
but I can lean in water, mud, and dirt, it rolls grime, off. it rolls off, yeah. spills salsa on my pants, whatever it might be, it just it wipes yeah. right off. And they have got the most incredible deep yeah. pockets. The first pockets. time you showed me these, all I was thinking was, okay, they're cargo pants, they got a lot of pockets, but you've sold me on it, I wear them now, I love these pants, again, because you know, they're, nothing's gonna stick to them. Yep. This is the feature that I actually like, you're showing this movement here, when you're wearing these, you'll see like this little fold right on the back here. That makes a big difference when you're shooting and you get down. It allows your pants to kind of expand at your thighs. Yeah. So when you're getting down, it's easier to shoot with. And there's just a lot of benefits and to wearing. They, they even have, this is great. If, if you wear a spider holster like we do, yeah. one of the things I don't like about spider holster, I always sing the praise of the spider holster, but the one thing I don't like about it, you can see what's happening. Can't get it blocks pocket. my pocket in my right pocket which is where my, where my spider holster is where my cell phone goes. Yeah. Well, these ones have, and they're made for a, a gun clip, but they fit an iPhone perfectly. Yeah, right or here. a Samsung. Yeah, either, either side, fits in there you perfectly. just slip your phone right in, right, just boop, and yep. it's easy access for the phone. So it's it's pretty awesome yep. to be able to pull that out. But Love these pants, and they yeah. come in like 15, 15 or 20 different, different colors. So, so they're 511, 511 striker pants is what they're called. Yes. But, Great. Anything yep. else here on the table? Oh, one thing that I have, can I go on, on another one here? Go ahead. So this is something that, this is really pre-pre-wedding, not just the, the wedding day pack up, but this one's not filled out, but this is my shoot list. So I give this to the bride during my initial appointment with her, and it basically has all the information about the wedding on the first page. And then I just go through the whole wedding day, like photo checklist for the bride before the ceremony, photo checklist for the, the groom before the ceremony, checklist for the wedding ceremony. These are all the shots that I can take during the day, right? But I use this as, this is a necessity shot. Okay. You tell me what shots I have to get to make your day complete. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell them once they fill it out, because I've had brides and grooms say, every one of these. I'm like, I'm not gonna get every one of them. No. But I wanna make sure that I do get the shots that they exactly. really want. And it you goes got, all You gotta way, carry lists with you. It all goes all the way to the after the wedding reception. So everything. So awesome. make sure you have that. Yep. And carry it with you and go through it and check it off. So. Okay. Yeah. So this came from the next thing that I always recommend people carry, and I'm going to show you something that might to you be a little bit overkill, but I, I don't think so. I think it's a great product. But this came out of my video days, and that is carry a video light. Okay. I've always carried small video lights. Now the big LEDGO light here. Um, this is portable, has three batteries on the back, and this thing is incredibly bright. It's super bright. There is a lot of times where we want to create something that can't be created just simply because of space. You, you don't have room a lot of times where the bride's getting ready to set up a big soft box and things, but having this little light and just turning it on off to the side somewhere, mm -hmm. this thing can just change how you photograph stuff. So. Uh, and video yeah, lights really, really and it's here. really really bright so you can see that right there it's, yeah it's really really bright it's there. but any size <laughs> but I, I would suggest I see a thing. you would you. bring a constant light with you because yeah. these things are wonderful um, it actually can mount on a light stand you can just set it somewhere and the fact is with LEDs they're not hot no so they, they don't it, it get cool about that like even this is my monopod this is another thing I you know we're not talking so much about gear but I bring a monopod yeah. with me with a pin on the top because things like this right this now can fit, you know, right in here if I loosen it up and, yep. and let it slide Because you bring down. an assistant, which is I very do. smart. So that's the other thing I bring with me. There, there we go. There. So, you know, I can use this and extend that, and now I've got super high reach. Yep. But I also put my, you know, my S1, Interfit S1 lights on this thing, but it makes all the difference in the it world does. to be able to do that. So. Okay. Um, and speaking of video, I, I know you're not a big video person. I've done video for a lot of time. I carry the Osmo with me now yeah. at a wedding, so I can actually pull this out. This is basically a uh, a gimbal and camera that would be on a on a DJI. Yeah, this is, you, you have the drone. 4K camera version. Correct. This, this so, thing has the camera built in. Yep, it's all built into this thing. And I've got the Osmo. That's the mobile that you use the phone with. So but there's cool. a lot of times inside of a wedding where I'll have a couple minutes and I'll want to grab a couple. Mm -hmm shots really quickly. This thing is so smooth. You can see I can move it all around and, and that camera just stays where it's supposed to stay. Yeah. So if you're into doing that sort of thing, I actually, we use a lot of times one just, it's the same system, but it's for a cellular yeah, it's, it's called phone, the, the Osmo so. Mobile. And that, that has, looks the same, but instead yeah. of having this little side wing off it, you actually attach where the camera is here, you attach your, your phone in it. Yep. So I, I carry that now to weddings. I've been using that for uh, about a year now, and, and I love using that yep. to just grab a couple shots. 
if unless there's video people if there's video someone's there's videoing worry, the wedding I, I just avoid videoing but you know hopefully you guys found that this stuff that we just showed you here you know it gives you a reminder of all the things you need to think about yeah. this is not the end all table of, of everything but these are just things that we think people forget. You forget all the time. And if you have this stuff, it will make or break your day so many times. Yeah. So um, yeah, think about it. If, if you guys have other stuff that you think is the have to bring yes. with you, put it in the notes below. Share it with everybody. We'd love to hear and start that conversation. And it maybe even remind us of stuff yeah. that we need to bring for our wedding coming up. Awesome. But uh, yeah, perfect. Let's head back up. Let's do it. All right. Fortunate questions. All right, are you okay. ready for today's you know, fortunate I, I question? I am getting very impressed with your passing. Okay, so let's I'm see just your, do, well, just our balancing that. act. That is almost a one chopstick balance. All right. See, I was ready to catch it. What do we have today? We have a question, who's it from? It's from Jack. All right, In Jack. Grand Bay, a local guy. All right. All right. It says, what is the best social media platform to use for displaying your pictures? Okay. Um, so today, Again, I, I don't know what Jack's asking. I mean, what kind of photos? Are we just talking general I don't know. photos? I, I kind of think he's asking like, you know, it's Facebook, Instagram, I mean, whatever. That's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah, I, I would think it really depends on what type of pictures. So like today, for instance, we're gonna talk about wedding photos. Mm -hmm. I really think the right platform for wedding photos is Instagram. I'm not a huge fan of Instagram. I don't use it a lot, but when it comes to weddings, I think that is the platform because that is where you've got that younger, group yep. and, and that's where the brides are. The brides that you're trying to impress, they're on Instagram. They're, they have a Facebook account, but that's where they're active. So I think a good thing, a good thing about that is that Instagram, it's not cluttered with other stuff, right? It's just pictures. It's basically. images. So images. Yeah. So yeah. So you would say Instagram is your favorite. I, I would think so as far as if you're trying to get work, Yeah. you know, but I, I still believe, you know, Facebook is the largest sharer of photos in the world. Um, a lot of my a lot of my family work comes from there. Yeah, family portraits. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of think it's a combo between two. So I I would agree with the Instagram, but I also say Facebook, just because of a generational gap, right? So Instagram, great for only the younger viewers. Facebook actually is an older demographic, believe yes. it or not. I mean, that's not the way it started, but it's it's become that way. Yeah. So for wedding stuff, you know, a lot of times parents are paying for the wedding. They're looking at Facebook. Yeah. So. I say, you know, the younger generation may capture attention, but the people that are spending the money necessarily probably are on Facebook and it, it, do both. Yeah. I don't think it's That's funny. I was just getting ready to say, how about this? Put it on both. Yeah. But there are some keys to pointing on Facebook, posting on Facebook, I should say, yeah. um, that we'll go through on a later episode. But yeah, I would say, say yeah. that the others, I mean, what else do we have? We have Twitter, Google plus, Google plus. You know, those kind of things. I just stick with it too. Yeah. I think you'll be fine. I think you should Snapchat all your, but what if it's not wedding photography? You know, this is the funny one because a lot of people make fun of me because I still use Flickr for my stuff. Yes, outside we all do of, make fun of you because they, I believe, they have the best algorithm for how they compress. I'll give their you photos. that. The pictures they, do look they better look on Flickr than anything else, but I just wonder how long Flickr yeah. is going to be around. But you know, a lot of photographers like 500 px, but I don't believe you're going to get any work off of that. It's no. fun to have people say it's a great photo. Yep. But, yep. But good. It's an awesome question, Jack. As always, go ahead and enter your question below in the comment section. We'll be happy to have our interns stuff them into a fortune cookie that we can crack them open every week. All right. So thanks a lot. That's a great question. Hoi! Talking raw! Where's our sushi? No sushi yet because we are on our way to our favorite sushi oh, restaurant. Oh, I can't As wait. soon as we are so, through. This is going to be raw. a quick talking raw because we want to get to sushi. That's right. This is just a really cool tip that I learned probably like 10 years ago and I still use it today. It is a quick way to make eyes pop in Photoshop. Okay. So really it. quickly. Pop them eyes. I am just going to, I got a picture of face here. We've got some eyes. They look great. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw a new layer on top of there, just a blank layer. I'm gonna hit B to get my brush. I'm gonna use a white brush and I'm gonna go ahead, not at the opacity there, I'm gonna get the opacity up to 100%. And I'm gonna paint white right over those. Right over the eye. Huh? Right over those eyes. Doesn't that look amazing? No, no. not yet. <laughs> okay, so I've done that. The next thing I'm gonna do is under my layers panel, I am just gonna set this to Overlay and wow, look at those eyes. You're really impressed, aren't so you? So far, I am exactly blown away. <laughs> at this point, what I'm going to do is I will just uh, zoom in here a little bit 
And I'm gonna go ahead and use, I hate telling people that I use this because I wished it wasn't in Photoshop, my eraser tool. Uh -huh. There's absolutely- I was gonna say, it's a little, uh, what we call it, overspray. A little overspray of that white. So, you know, I'm just gonna clean it up around her eye, whatever it's called there. What are those called? Iris. Eye lids. Oh, lids, okay. And I'm gonna even take it just a little bit off of the pupil. Right, I'm gonna hit this eye over here. I'm just gonna clean this up right across there. Right there, the top eyelid. All right. Off that pupil. And you're still looking at that going, okay, I have no clue where you're going with this because yeah, it, it looks terrible. It looks like she looks like a cat. It does, but it's, it's on its own layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the opacity of that layer down to zero. All right. And I'm just gonna start bringing it up. Generally, it's somewhere right around 20%. Okay. So I'm gonna go right there at 20%. And now watch when I turn this off and on. Let me zoom in a little bit first. So there's the before, oh, yeah. there's the after. What it does, it just brightens the well, eyes. I think it's just adding light into that eye, right? It does. In a natural way where it doesn't look like you, yep. I mean, some of these eye programs I've seen, you know, that- They look totally unnatural. Yeah, it looks like yeah. you just painted on eyes. Well, this looks better. Exactly, and you always have to be careful that you don't actually get it on the white part of the eye because yeah. you brighten the white part of the eye, you take away from just the look of the eye. That's no, cool. And it doesn't look three-dimensional anymore, but it also brings out a lot of color. If you do this with someone with brown eyes, it'll bring a lot of that brown golden color to the forefront. Mm -hmm. You do this with somebody with blue eyes, their eyes are gonna glow. Um, you can overdo it. This is the problem with this thing is, you know, I see people that do something like that, 60%, 40%. Yeah, no, that doesn't look natural. It doesn't look natural, but you know, somewhere right around 20 to 30%. I like it. Usually looks really good. Quick, easy to do. You just, a little bit of white, set it to overlay, clean it up, you're done. Awesome. So good tip. that is your quick. Good. Talking raw today. So, hey, uh, you know, we had a good day today. We did. Showing kind of what to pack and uh, all that stuff. Yeah. And looked at some things that you take that I don't take that, that are new to me yeah. that I'm excited about uh, adding into my so, wedding so repertoire. So give me some food for thought. Food for thought is the fact that I don't care how long you've been shooting anything, weddings, portraits, families, you always have something to learn. Absolutely. You know, it, it's easy. There's always an easier way out there. That's why I like talking to other photographers mm -hmm. because I'm always learning new ways to do things. Yep. You know, my thing is What's that? weddings are hard. <laughs> I mean, no matter how many weddings you've done, they are a lot of work, a lot of work. Yeah. And just, you know, I think we proved that just with the packing alone, right? All the things you need to think about stuff you've never thought about that you need to bring. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a lot to organize in your brain. It is. You know, I know some people are, are better at doing that than others, but yeah. it's hard work, but it's, it's a big it, investment. You know what I think though? It's really rewarding. It is. I mean, it's at the end of the day, when you see, you know, what you came out with in pictures and have a happy bride and groom and a happy mother of the bride, then uh, the, then the day is wonderful. But yeah, all good. Right. good so show. next week, make sure you join us for our wedding show. So that show is all about us actually shooting the wedding. We're gonna go out and shoot a real wedding in Napa, California yep. at a- And you're gonna winery. come along with us and we're gonna give you some tips along the way. But as always, make sure you subscribe, like, and ring the bell on the top. The bell simply allows you to get notified every time something new comes on the YouTube channel. So that's it for this week. We look yep. forward to seeing you again next week. Have an incredible week. Go out and click some pictures and don't forget to say sushi. We want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. That's right, the Panoptic Chopstick channel where we are bringing fun to photography. Hey, we want to invite you each week to join us on Tuesday where we put out a new episode of our Panoptic Chopstick show where we will give you tips, tricks, interviews with photographers. We'll give you DIY projects to do on your own and maybe even inspire you a bit. That's right, including always a little dash of fun. So we want to invite you to go ahead and subscribe and like our channel where you will get notified every Tuesday of brand new episodes. But welcome to the Panoptic Chopsticks channel. Come join the fun.